again everyone welcome to another episode of home shop tips today I'll be showing you how to vacuum test and pressure test the crankcase on a two-stroke engine this particular engine I have here is the uh, my home light zip chainsaw well, it still wasn't running quite right so I decided to check the seals in order to do that I bought this handy unit it's a mighty vac model MV8500 Silverline Elite Automotive Kit. You can use it to, to check to do, to do some diagnostic checks on your engine, uh, bleed your brakes, because it comes with this uh, reservoir to hold brake fluid or something. But I, I bought it because it does it's a vacuum and pressure pump all in one unit. Otherwise I would have had to buy whoops, I would have to buy a vacuum pump and then a pressure a pressure bulb like what they uh, use to check your blood pressure and some tubing and uh, gauges and it, it, it added up to about the same price as this. You can buy this new on Amazon for about $68 shipped and, and this I paid 50, 51 or 52 on eBay. Anyway, it has a pressure and vacuum release lever here. It has a little knob right here that you turn to do uh, to select either pressure or vacuum it has a gauge it won't show up too well but it, the gauge does pressure and vacuum goes both ways and all you do you just sh sh squeeze it like that to draw a pressure vac or vacuum and it comes with a bunch of this kit comes with a, you know some tubing these adapter things a bunch of these uh, plugs and uh, nozzles and stuff. I'll just I'll just show you quickly how the pump works. I've got it on vacuum right now, and I'll just cover up the outlet with my finger. Won't be able to to, to draw too good of a vacuum, but you'll see the needle go down that way. And I'll let go. Pop. I'll go back back to zero. Turn it to pressure, and you can see it make pressure. And I'll just let let go again. I'll go to zero. Very nice, very nice unit. It's all smooth cast aluminum. It looks it looks nice too, and it, it's it feels good to hold. It's nice and hefty. You can even get rebuild kits for these uh, if the O-rings wear out. And so that so that covers the the tools. And you'll need to prepare your engine for the test. Firstly, you'll need to make a adapter to go from your pressure or and vacuum pump to the engine. And I used a section of tubing that came with the kit and one of these one of these uh, adapter plug things that I shoved onto the hose, and then I shoved that plug into a spark plug that I, I bashed out the uh, ceramic inside. So it was basically just, it had the threads and the hex, and it was just straight through. Uh, and then I, I found an O-ring that fit on. You can just barely see the black O-ring there, so it seals up perfectly. The, uh, that metal washer that comes on, on the spark plug didn't seal up. It, it, the pressure came p right past it, so I took that off and put an O-ring on it. And I put it all together. I used a bunch of silicone, RTV silicone sealant, gasket maker and it it, uh, it works great. You want to make sure to pressure and vacuum test this unit itself. I put this, put the other end on my vacuum pump and I held, I took this out of the cylinder and I held the end of the spark plug part with my finger to seal it up and I drew a pressure and vacuum on it and it held fine. So you want to make sure that you you won't have, you don't have any leaking uh, seals here because that's that's going to void the test of your engine and also make you go running around in circles and drive you crazy. Uh, secondly, you'll want to make sure that the piston is at bottom dead center because that means the transfer ports in the cylinder are uncovered by the piston so the cylinder and the crankcase are not uh, sealed off from each other by the piston. 
And if you don't know what I'm talking about, about transfer ports and everything, uh, if you're not familiar with how the two-stroke engine works, I would suggest going to HowStuffWorks.com and do a search for two-stroke engines and it'll show you how a two-stroke motor works because uh, as the piston goes up it creates a vacuum in the crankcase and that's what pulls the fuel and air through the carburetor into the crankcase and as the piston goes down it creates a pressure in the crankcase which makes the fuel and air mixture shoot up through the transfer ports into the cylinder. So anyway, um, you want to make sure the piston's at the bo bottom dead center. You're going to need to make an adapter plate that uh, goes in place of the carburetor. I just used a little piece of like 3 16 aluminum plate and uh, drilled two holes in it, bolted it on. I already had the gasket from the carburetor so I didn't need to make any special gasket or piece, use a piece of rubber or anything. Bolted it right on. And this particular engine is uh, reed valve, which means there's a like a there's a one-way reed valve there, and I, I held that open with a piece of wire that I just shoved through it because I didn't I wanted to make sure while doing a pressure test I didn't want a little bit of pressure to be leaking past that reed valve, and uh, and uh, even though it would seal here against this plate I didn't I didn't want that uh. Uh, that this little volume here to take a second to pressurize. I thought that might give me a, a slightly faulty reading until the pressure built up in, in this little area. Anyway, I just held the reed valve open with a piece of wire and made this adapter, this uh, block it, block off plate in place of the carburetor. Also blocked off the exhaust. Uh, it's a little tough on the home light because there's no screws or anything or flanges like on the carburetor. But I just made this plate. I used a piece of leather, soaked it in oil. So uh, I figured the oil would make it seal a little better, and I clamped it with two vice grips. Luckily, there's these little knobs, little nubs here that I clamped against, and uh, it seems to seal pretty well. Then, uh, then that's it. You've blocked off your engine. And the only place it can leak, assuming that your uh, adapter block off plates are good, um, the only place it can leak after pressure, uh, pressurizing it is from the crank seal on the flywheel side, the crank seal on the clutch side, the cylinder jug to crankcase gasket, or the cylinder crankcase to uh, crankcase half gasket right there. And uh, those are the only places it can leak. And to test where it's leaking, I just have this water bottle here. I poked a hole in the cap and it's filled with soap and water mixture. And uh, you just sprinkle it on where, whatever you want to test and it, it, it'll blow bubbles. I, I use the same technique to test my uh, oxyacetylene rig over there when I put on a new tank to make sure it's not leaking acetylene in my shop so I don't blow myself up. Anyway, so I'll set it up for you. This saw was driving me nuts and I'm glad that I finally got it, uh, got it diagnosed now. I'll show you what was wrong with it. It, it. As it turns out, it was a seal. So I take my my uh, uh, pump here. I put it on pressure. It, this does not hold pressure or vacuum at all. And I just put that over the bar. And I'm squeezing it. And you can see it's not even coming off the zero. So I'll show you where it's leaking from. Oops. Oh, As it turns out, of course, it was the clutch side, so it was more of a pain for me. I had to take the clutch off, spray some uh, my soap and water mixture there. 
see if this comes up on the camera. Uh, maybe it isn't. I'm pumping it right now. But uh, rest assured, this, this is where it's leaking. I think you can just barely see a bubble there. I think, yeah, I can just barely see it coming out from the top right over there. I think all the grease and oil on here is kind of uh, cutting the soap so the soap isn't getting too bubbly. But I definitely can see it. I didn't even need the soap mixture. When I first took the clutch off and pumped it, I saw bubbles coming out of there. No, it's too bad it's not showing up on the camera, but you'll you'll see bubbles either from the soap mixture or just from the oil oil and stuff that was on there. So anyway, there's my problem, so i got to break this saw completely down and pull the seals out and replace the seals, and I'm probably going to replace the bearings too while I'm at it. And uh, that's it. It's pretty simple. The mo the, it takes the most time just to block off the exhaust and carburetor, but uh, that's it. Thanks for watching another episode of Home Shop Tips, and as always, come back for more.